Okay, so today we're going to look at the poem My Father Would Not Show Us, which I guess would be lumped in with the family group of poems within relationships. Um, it is by Ingrid de Kock, a South African poet, and we can presume it is autobiographical. Um, we can't definitely know that, but you can presume it, but just make sure it is a presumption. I am going to assume this is about her own father. Um, otherwise, you can just talk about the persona in the poem rather than talking about it as if it's the poet herself. So the character in the poem um, who is talking about my is the persona. So this poem has a little kind of subheading, as we say. Um, there is a name for it and it will come back to me in a moment, um, which is, it, it has a quote within the poem. This is another writer, Raina Maria Rilke, and this quote, which way do we face to talk to the dead, has obviously inspired Ingrid de Kock to write this particular poem um, about death and how you say things that possibly you should have said in life to people. Um, you can't talk to them or can you? I guess that's what it's really asking. Um, so my father would not show us. We can see that it's a, quite a personal poem. Us, we assume, is she has siblings. Um, so she's part of a family and she's kind of writing on their behalf. Would we have some modal verbs in this um, poem? Modal verbs means that there's a certain amount of kind of choice in it so would suggests that he would not show us that there was a deliberate action on his point that's supposed to say verbs not modal verbs let's try and get rid of that modal verbs okay so Let's look at structure first of all. So if we just look at the poem, the shape of it, it is written in stanzas. They are there are different lines to each stanza, as we say three, 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 a six, a five, a four, and then a five again. So they're fairly similar stanzas, but they're not all the same size, obviously. We can see as well that the line lengths vary um, from short lines to long lines. So it's not all completely regular, um, but it's not completely irregular either. It, it, there is some separation um, of small stanzas. Um, it starts off with a very stark image, as we can see, my father's face, five days dead, is organised for me to see, and I think that's why that's the shortest verse. The short verse here mirrors the shock of what she's seeing. Looking at structure a little bit more, though, um, is there a rhyme structure? Face dead, see, hear, and naturally. Delivered, face, reason, pyjamas, allowed, bean, place. Roof, rising, face, die, away, bean, spring, lay. There is some rhyme within this. It's not completely unrhymed, but I don't think it's any, in any particular structure, but there is definitely some rhyme. So again, we have kind of an imperfect, and not particularly regular structure. And of course, that might mirror the imperfect nature of their relationship. That's meant to say irregular. It would be lovely if these things worked properly, wouldn't it? I Kilo, that's better. Like the relationship. Okay. I think that's all we can say about structure as well. You could have a look yourself and see if those shorter stanzas 
and then the longer one here which seems to go into her memory perhaps that is building up to this longer memory just here and that's why the mid kind of stanza is the longest one but you can think about that for yourselves i'm not here to think about it all for you um okay so going into language now i'll go into red for the language so we immediately have the alliterative father's face here, which brings both the attention um, to this um, stark image, five days dead, is organised for me to see. That's very passive, isn't it? It has been organised by someone else, obviously, because he is dead. Um, but it's a very kind of, uh, it's not usually, you don't usually organise a face, so it's kind of a strange image there. Also, we have the thinking like, why so long? Why has she only seen him five days after he died? Perhaps it implies their relationship wasn't too good. Perhaps it implies she hasn't been able to get back to see him. But I mean, I think you can see as we go through the poem that really it's the first of those, that the relationship has been complicated it's cold in here. Again, a short, sharp statement um, because she's probably in a morgue uh, where they're keeping the body. And the borrowed coffin gleams unnaturally. There's kind of an, um, an eeriness about that. The gleam of a borrowed coffin. The pine one has not yet been delivered. Now, pine is a quite a cheap wood. And it either implies that they are a poor family and they can't afford a nice coffin or that they can't be bothered to get a nice coffin. You could make up your own interpretation there. But the borrowed coffin is one that, you know, he's in until um, she comes along and buys the real one. But again, it's a bit of an odd notion that you borrow a coffin. Um, maybe it's a metaphor for something. A borrowed coffin. Um, can't think what yet, but, you know, we'll come back to that. And then she kind of talks to herself, half expected this inverted face, as if that means kind of turned the other way or turned upside down in a way. Inside out, upside down. Why is she half expecting that? because that's as he was in life, his face turned away. But not the soft, for some reason, unfrozen collar of his striped pyjamas. You get the connotations of comfort and childhood with those striped pyjamas, which is what is bringing the death even more home to her. And then she goes into her memory. This is the last time I am allowed that question of being allowed to remember something because he's even controlling her in death to remember my childhood as it might have been, not as it was a louder, braver place. This implies that her childhood was um, neither loud nor brave. They all had to be quiet. Um, they all had to go around quite timidly. And then she lists there's some caesuras here to describe the house crowded a house with a tin roof being hailed upon and voices rising it seems quite angry place and a small kind of um poor place with a tin roof being hailed upon that could be literally or the sound of hail on a tin roof is very loud or metaphorically hailed upon with I don't know anger bad emotions my father's wry smile wry means kind of very knowing and slightly sinister it's not a nice smile it's not a natural smile his half turned face. Again, everything here is about um, something not quite being right. There's a half turned face. There is an unfrozen collar of the pyjamas when everything else in that room is basically frozen. There's a borrowed coffin. It's unnatural. Nothing here is quite right. You might say there's a semantic field of... Um, the unknown, perhaps, or 
deception, I might even say, something like that. And then it, the title comes in this stanza here, My Father Would Not Show Us How to Die. Now, this is finished off the beginning of the title, My Father Would Not Show Us. At this bit, we, we don't know what he's going to not show them. But here, she comes to the kind of quite surprising conclusion that it's how to die. You know, should a parent teach that? And why won't he? Why does this... See she seems frustrated, angry about this. He hid. He hid away. Again, this is a, um, a key line in the repetition of hid. But also in the caesura there, bringing attention to those, to that word hid. Um, again, deception. Secrets secrecy behind the curtains where his life had been now this is probably um it can be a double meaning here so let's scoot up a little bit so this can be about hospital curtains literally being drawn around a, a body or a metaphor for something hidden his life was always slightly hidden away from them as if he was um hiding behind curtains the florist flowers curling into spring. Again, you get these fricatives in the um, alliteration here, which is slightly sinister. And it echoes the beginning of my father's face, the florist flowers curling into spring. I think we talked about this before. It either means they're blooming because they're opening or dying because they're curling up. I'm not quite sure which one, but perhaps both. And then he lay inside, he lay. He hid, he hid away, he lay inside, he lay. And those two lines rhyme with each other, don't they? Kind of connecting them in the hiding and the laying, but laying inside so no one can find you. And then there's a father's memory. I don't. She doesn't say how she knows this, but the father's mem memory comes here. And this is perhaps the most difficult stanza to interpret. He could recall the rag and bone man. Remember that somebody who comes out um, asking for any, any old eye and any old kind of trinkets that you can sell, that you give to him and he can sell on. Passing his mother's gate in the morning light. Now the tunnelling sound of the dogs next door. Everything he hears is white. OK, and you've got that light and white rhyme as well to really bring attention to that image. So the rag and bone man passing his mother's gate in the morning light is a memory he has. Of, they would clink along the rag and bone man because they'd have all kind of metal things tied to them and things as they walked along. They'd have a big cart with loads of stuff on it. So that would make a noise. I'm assuming that noise makes him angry because she talks about, um, you know, it could have been loud at their childhood. So... Um, now all he hears is the tunnelling sound of the dogs next door. Of course, that has connotations of digging and graves. But everything he hears is white. White noise. Nothing. Everything is unclear. Just like dying is unclear. We don't know what we're going into. Um, and perhaps it shows his anger with any kind of noise. But it is kind of strange image because white normally links to purity, light, truth, perhaps as he nears the end. He's seeing the light, the literal light at the end of the tunnel. Who knows? The last stanza, she repeats, you think, the title and the refrain from the middle of the poem. But she's, there's a key difference. Instead of my father would not show us how to die, my father could not show us how to die. This seems to me to be a realisation on the poet's part or the persona's part. Realisation that it wasn't his fault. 
it's almost like she is forgiving him. There's some forgiveness there. It's not that he wouldn't show them. He couldn't show them because of something in him. He just couldn't do it. And she realises now that that's the case and kind of forgives him for it. He turned, he turned away. Instead of he hid away, he's now turning away. Turning away, perhaps, to spare his children. To spare them, not hiding from them, turning from them. There's a difference there. Under the counterpane, that's just like a fancy quilt, basically. Without one call or word or name, face to the wall, he lay. Um, I guess on the hour of death before you die is, you know, last words or sometimes people ask for, for someone. Um, but she assumes that there was nobody he called for. or Maybe she's been told that. And face to the wall, he lay just as if facing nothing, talking to nothing, asking for nothing. So it's quite a bleak poem, this. Um, and it hints at a very... Uh, complex relationship. But there is some forgiveness and understanding at the end. But I would say there's quite a lot of bitterness and bad memories at the beginning. So in this poem, love is difficult, complicated. Um, misinterpreted, maybe. Misunderstood, I'm going to put. Let's try that one more time. Just imagine I've written misunderstood there. So, therefore, what could we link this poem with? I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to let you copy that down for a minute, if indeed you are copying it down, which I very much hope you are. Um, so if we're talking about complexity in a relationship, um, forgiveness and understanding, some bad memories, love's difficult, love's complicated. I think we have to think about the manhunt, which is why I did this earlier today as well, um, to link it with. Um, Perhaps Valentine as well. Um, neutral tones, definitely, with that kind of negative side of love. Um, although this is a family relationship rather than a romantic relationship. Uh, any of those. But there's probably many more as well that you could link that with. But overall, it's one of those poems that when you really look into it, the more you look at it, the more you can see in it and the more interpretations you can have of it. Just make sure that you really say that you make it understood that they are interpretations. This is not definitely what the poem means, but um, this is definitely a poem about somebody where there doesn't seem to be much love at first and at the end I personally don't think the love is there either I just think that there's more an acceptance of that was just the way he was um, rather than her and, and kind of a forgiving him for that rather than her coming to the end and thinking oh I you know I do love you after all um, it's quite a difficult poem quite a bitter poem really okay